Shalom Ya Sharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha HaKwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Archeum out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity. And shout a warm to the few Akwath that's listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled The Wicked Woman of Today Will Not Go Unpunished. Because, you know, in today's society, it's as if the woman is above the law. The woman is above correction. The woman can do whatever the hell she wants to do in society, whatever the hell she deems as right. And um, uh, pretty much there's no repercussions for her actions. She gets let off, she gets, um, let off the hook, you know. Do you know how many uh, men, women have put in jail under false accusations? You know, that's wicked, man, to put a man in jail under falsehood you know lying on them and and to get away with it you know that's crazy man but you see the reason for that is women don't um value men like how they used to you know i'm bad on my own i'm a boss ass independent bitch i don't need no man you know niggas ain't shit See, these are all the lies that Esau, Edom has fed Eve. And Eve has fully cultivated these lies and has ran with it. But at the same time, Eve is suffering because she don't have a man. But, you know, she refuses to see it that way because the, the woman is stubborn, man. You know, but, but her ways are wickedness. And um, the woman doesn't understand that. <laughs> we are in this situation that we're in in the world because of a woman that woman being eve and i'm going to bring out the scripture to prove that but even with that being said these women are still proud as all hell and don't want to submit to their husbands don't want to submit you know don't want to uh, uh, come up under the man don't want to do things according to the divine order which you can read of in first corinthians chapter 11 all right about how um yeah how shy Yahweh is the head of Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. The moment you put the woman um, ahead of the man, that's when things go disorderly. Things go out of course because that's not the divine order that has been set, but that's the order that Satan uses because Satan knows it's against our laws. And as long as Satan keeps us in a sinful state, then our power will work against us man but we are in the time of the great awakening and you know niggas are fed up with eve's uh, uh, uh um, bullshit man to be to be honest with you man and um you know the time of judgment is coming and you know this world right now is pretty much eve and esau's world and um they're both going to receive major judgment major judgment man you see, the majority of the two-thirds are women. Because as it is, there's more women out there than men. You know, that's how a man is able to have multiple wives. To be fruitful and multiply. Especially of the nation of Israel. So there's more women out there than men. So two-thirds, so the majority of the, of the two-thirds is going to be these wicked-ass women, man. These wicked Eves that didn't want to get their ass in line. That they don't want to repent, you know, that they don't want to um, um, take this truth seriously whilst they could. All right. So um, without further ado, let's bring out the precepts. But before I do that, I'm just going to um, take a sip of this water, man. It's a lucky. Yeah. Precepts. This is Isaiah 32 and 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. 
Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. And, and that's the thing. Eve doesn't want to give ear unto the speech of the Most High. A.K.A. Eve doesn't want to hear the words of the Bible. If it's not being taught by Pastor Porkchop, T.D. Snakes, Joseph Prince, Joel Osteen, or whoever these false prophets are, man, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear that the Heavenly Father... Uh, they don't want to hear that Yahweh Shai is dealing with the man and not the woman. They don't want to hear that the woman is not supposed to assert authority over the man. They don't want to hear that, oh, the woman has to be in subjection under the man. They don't want to hear that, man. They don't want to hear that a woman is meant to have just one man and not multiple men. They don't want to hear it, man. Okay? But this is the word that will save their lives if they just hearken unto it. Okay? Isaiah 32 and 9 again. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. For the vintage shall fail, the old way. This way of life that Eve has been used to, man. This niggas ain't shit lifestyle. Putting the husband on child support lifestyle. You know, we're dealing with multiple men. All right, it says the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled. Um, ye careless ones, I don't know. Verse 11, tremble ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Alright, you women are meant to be trembling man, you're meant to be shaking in your boots. All you proud ass women that claim you don't need a man, you're bad on your own, niggas ain't shit, well you better keep that same energy Heading into the time of Jacob's trouble, man. Because you're going to realise just how much you need a man. And specifically a man of the Lord to save you out of the said perils that's going to come upon the four corners of the earth, man. Why don't we go up to verse 2? Let's read verse 2. It reads, and a man, right, a man of the Lord, specifically shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Well, really and truly, all men are going to be a hiding place from the wind, which the wind represents destruction, right? Now, the difference between just your regular man and the men of the Lord, the elect, is that obviously the Lord is going to be dealing with his men. He's going to be dealing with his elect. The men of the other nations, of course, they're going to do their duty as a man to the best of their ability, but that's only gonna that's that's only gonna be for so long before that man is taken out the way and killed. Because the Lord ain't dealing with these men of the other nations, man. So really and truly, this is talking about the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, they're going to be able to successfully protect women from this destruction. Those women that submit to them, those women that um. Um, you know, don't want to be a burden onto them, you know, who want to do everything in their power to serve and please that man, you see, Isaiah 32 and 2, and a man shall be a as an hiding place from the wind, from the destruction, and a covert from the tempest, which is a violent storm, as rivers of water in a dry place. As the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So that's what it's going to be like to have a man of the Lord in these days, in these last days, in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be like having a river of water in a dry place. You're walking in a dry desert and then you see that river of water. That's, that's, that's like refuge, man. That's, you know, you'd appreciate that. You'd value that. Or as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. You're in a weary land. The sun's just beating on you. You ain't got no shade, no nothing. But then you find that great rock that you hide behind to shield you from the sun. See, that's what it's going to be like to have a man of the Lord in these last days, man. 
Now the problem is these women, they they um you know, these Israelite women, these Evites, they don't value the men of the Lord. They don't value their men, let alone the men of the Lord, man. You know? We're we're pretty much just just seen as um um how can I say it? As, as as things that that they can just abuse, you know, you know, you got these eaves that they were multiple men. By the way, it's ten forty four. Abaratas are, you know, we be at that hopeful elect, you know. Um, see, um, a lot of Eve, they have uh, uh multiple men for multiple uses, you know. They got they got one man there to pay the 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 uh. You know, the electric bill. Got another man there to pay for the rent. Got another man there that they be fucking... By the way, they're all fucking these men. You know? You... you, you look, the, the latest thing out there. You, you got you got uh, 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 the man there to, to, to pay for that Beyonce ticket, man. Because, you know, Beyonce is doing that massive world tour. And, uh, you know, those tickets ain't cheap. Ain't, ain't cheap. It's lucky. Those chick... <laughs> it's been a long day, man. So lucky. Um, those tickets ain't cheap, man. You know, so Eve has multiple different men for multiple different uses and they all give them and they give them all sex. You know, you got some sin past niggas out there. They don't, they don't even be getting sex from Eve, but, but, but Eve will still use them, man. When Eve is only meant to have one man. You see? And, you know, Eve likes to say... Well, how comes men can have multiple women, but I can't have multiple men? Well, that's, well, you know, to, to be quite frank with you, that's just one of the perks of being a man. You know? The scriptures say to be fruitful and multiply, man. If you if you was to have one woman and you plant your seed in her and you have to wait, what, nine, ten months and then you can do it again. When you can plant your seed in multiple women and then in nine, ten months... Have those babies pop out. Well, that is being fruitful and multiplying, man. Plus, you have multiple men. Then, you know, you have a child. Then there's confusion. Then you don't know who the, who the father is. But if, 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 if a man has multiple women, you know who the father is of all those children, man. You see? Like, men and women are two different beings, man. We, we are not the same. Therefore... We can't be under the same juris jurisdiction. You see? Let's move on. Let's go to Isaiah 13. And we'll start at... Um, verse 11. And it reads, And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. Now, this isn't specifically talking about Eve, but we can liken the scripture onto Eve because Eve is a uh, 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 wicked you know Eve is um, in league with the serpent the so called white man the Edomites and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and lay low the haughtiness of the terrible now Eve is proud as all hell man they're so proud that they're the only nation of women who believe they don't need a man. Who believe niggas ain't shit. Who believe that they're bad on their own, man. That's pride. And, and the Heavenly Father hates pride. And he's going to show Eve how much he hates pride, man, when he comes through with that judgment. Okay? Now, let's read verse 12. I will make a man... An Israelite man, an elect Israelite man of Israel. <laughs> an elect Israelite man of Israel. Salaki, man. As I said, long day. Salaki. But Lord willing, this still be other fan, man. This is verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So you see, the Lord is getting ready to make the Israelite man, beginning with the elect, more precious than them fine gold it didn't say the israelite woman now you see you women you've had your glory on this side already man you have to understand that 
You know, you got these niggas bowing at your feet, bowing at your very, uh, your every request. You know, you got the law working in your favor. You women get away with murder. This is your world, man. This is your world. The kingdom of heaven is gonna be the world, um, uh, for the Israelite men. You know how it should be. And you women in the kingdom are going to happily submit to your Israelite husband. One more time, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold because the elect men out here are going to be rare and they're going to be highly sought after because they're going to be the only ones with that uh, stability, man. Because they have that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding. The elect of the nation of Israel are getting ready to be raised up with that spiritual power, man. They're going to be able to defend themselves against all Esau's, uh, everything Esau tries to throw their way. They're going to be able to defend themselves, man. Whilst all these men are going to be out here dying by the sword, dying by the famine, dying by the teeth of wild beasts, the spirits created for vengeance. The elect man is going to prevail through all those things, man. Job 5 and 22 says, At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, man. The elect men are going to have a completely different spirit on them. To be able to laugh at destruction and famine, you're going to have to have a, 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 the spirit of the Lord on you, man. So, um, women are going to come to the realisation that their salvation ultimately is in the hands of, 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 of an elect man of the Lord. And they're going to have to submit to his will in order to make it, man. You see? And this is why in that day, women ain't going to be worried about how many wives you're dealing with. They ain't going to care oh, that, you, that you got three, four, five, six, seven wives. They're just going to want a piece of the pie because ultimately they want, they, they want to be saved. Whether that means they have to be the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, they don't care because all they want is is for you to take them away from their approach, man. You know, let's go to Isaiah four and one real quick. In that and in that day, seven women, which seven is the number of completion, shall take hold of one man, saying, "We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us." Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So you see, these women are going to humble, man. They're going to settle down. That pride is going to cease from them. They're going to realize uh, uh, what has pride gotten us. Nothing, man. They're going to realize who the true prizes are. The men of the Lord. They're the ones who are going to be highly sought after in those days. Right now, these women are highly sought after. You know, you got these simps on Instagram. You know, you got the these women making OnlyFans. You got niggas paying to see a woman naked, man. You got men, sorry, did I say women? You got men paying to see women naked, man. Paying all sorts of ridiculous money. Man, this is the simp our society. But really and truly, the man beginning with the Israelite man, the elect of the Israelite man, that's the true prize. You see? This is Micah. Chapter 7 and verse 10. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy power? Because you see, when he was slapping niggas on child support, you know, and uh, uh, doing all sorts of wickedness to the Israelite man, they didn't consider Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. They didn't consider, man. Saying, where is thy power? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now she shall be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Because you see, if a man of the Lord don't pick you, you Evites, you're through, man. You're going to realize your salvation purely comes uh, through, through, you know, being under the wing of a man of the Lord 
All right. And if a man, if the men of the Lord, if a, if a man of the Lord don't want to deal with you in that day, then you know you, you can pretty much uh, uh, just brace yourself for for brutal death, man. You might have three hundred niggas run a train on you, and that's how you die, man. It's happened before. What's that? Judges nineteen. If you want to read, you can have niggas run a train on you, and, and you die that way, or whatever other gruesome ways the Lord has set out. For these, for the wicked of these people to be killed, man. All right. You see, this ain't a game. Eve is gonna realize this ain't a game no more, man. You can't, you 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 can't uh, uh, be operating in this prideful spirit, this prideful wicked spirit. You see. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus twenty-five. This is verse uh, 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. See, so a man can be wicked, but still, it wouldn't compare to the wickedness of a woman. You know, these women of today are wicked as hell, man. These women of today are wicked as hell, man. And they're proud as hell, too. You know, you, you, you can't tell these women shit. There's nothing you can tell these women, man. You know? Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the po to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. So she's going to get exactly what she deserves in these last days, man. All right? I'm proving the point that I mentioned earlier how we are in this wicked society all because of a woman, that woman being Eve, this is um, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. And through her we all die. When Eve ate of the apple. Meaning when Eve took on that, that uh, uh, wayward philosophy. Because that's what the apple represents. When the serpent, the serpent being Esau. Right? Gave on to her. This is why it's Esau and Eve's world. You see? So the beginning of sin came through the woman, man. Yeah, these women are still proud as hell. Don't want to come up under the man. Still want to do things their own way. Yet we are literally in this position in life because of a woman. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs. Chapter 30, verse 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. See, so your woman will step out on you, come back home, kiss you on the lips, might even uh, 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 give you the box too and say, I've done no wickedness, man. That's scary. But that's the reality of um, of the life we live in today. You know, because we we're still under them curses, man. The Lord is alleviating us of those curses slowly but surely, but we're still under those curses, man. All right. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness, man. She going to fuck another nigger. She going to suck another nigger, another nigger, come back home and say she ain't done nothing wrong. And, you know, you see, one thing about women is they're led by their emotions, man. So if, they, if, it, if it felt right to them, then, then according to their eyes, they ain't do nothing wrong. Even though she just committed adultery, man. But in her eyes, because she felt good and or maybe you, you weren't doing this or you weren't doing that. She stepped out on you. Like, in her eyes, she's all right, man. But you see, she's going to learn the hard way that she ain't all right. Okay? Let's close out here. In Ecclesiasticus. Zerach 10. And uh, 12. 
the beginning of pride is when one departed from the most high now again this isn't talking specifically about eve but we what we do know about eve is that eve has got a very prideful a very proud spirit on her which is why she operates the way she does okay the beginning of pride is when uh one departed from the most high and his heart mind is turned away from his maker these women don't consider the lord they don't pray they don't consider the true names you know most of these women are witches these women be believing in their manifestation ability and um anything but the truth man to put it plain and simple all right Verse 13, for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, um, th uh, and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So you see, Eve is going to hit with all sorts of plagues, all sorts of hell, all sorts of judgment. And she ain't going to have no explanation for it. She's going to be scared as hell as well, man. But but she's going to remember. She said she bad on her own. And she don't need a man. The Lord's going to leave her to it, man. <laughs> it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. Verse 14. The Lord have cast down the thrones of proud princes and set up the meek in their stead. Psalms 149 I believe it is, talks about how the Lord is going to beautify the meek with salvation, man. The Lord is going to beautify the meek with salvation. So Eve is going to realise soon enough that all along the man has been the prize, man. More specifically, the elect man of the nation of Israel has always been the prize, man. But for a lot of these Evites, it's going to be too late, man. And they're just going to have to hold the wrath of the Lord, Okay. But you know, you women better, you got, you got a man of the Lord at home, you better start valuing the man, man. You know, because your salvation is literally in his hands if the Lord be dealing with him. You have to consider that, man. The Lord ain't with the adultery stuff, so don't think, oh yeah, you're just going to leave him and you're going to start fucking with another man of the Lord. Nah, man, it don't work like that. The woman was created for one man. And that's why a lot of you women are so psychologically messed up, man. Because you take on... The uh, traits and the likings of of, the, of 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 all those men you be dealing with, man, and you wonder why you so bugged out, you know. But you know, I, I've pretty much made the point, man. The wicked women of today will not go unpunished. You know, the Lord, well, the Lord sees everything, man. Uh, what scripture is that? Sirach 23 We'll close out On um, Sirach 23 Alright Because the Lord sees you women man Trust me You ain't gonna pull a fast one on your How about Shemiel Shai They know what you be doing man Alright Because you see Eve is gonna be like I ain't done nothing wrong oh, We see you man We see you but We'll close out here anyway Sirach 23 and 19 uh, Such a man only feareth the eyes of men See, and a lot of Eve, they just fear the eyes of men. If they, they feel that if they, if they ain't being caught, then then no one knows. Therefore, how are they gonna pay for judgment when no one knows what they did, right? Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, considering the most secret parts. So, so the Lord sees what you women be doing, man. You ain't about to pull a fast one on the Lord, you know. And the scriptures say, uh, uh, actually, you don't need to mention that scripture, but um, yeah, man, um, you women ain't getting away with all your wickedness, man. And if you don't repent from your wicked ways, then you will have to die the death of the wicked, man. All right? Yeah, man, I've pretty much made a point on that. So, uh, 
Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time, I say Shalom.